Hey everybody, Windrick X here doing a live video commentary on Hex TCG MMO uh, on four Shards and Wars on my personal channel. Uh, let's see here. Very strong ramp card. Like it a lot. Tempestuous Blade Master. Reprocessor. Since it says any troop, you're able to upgrade all your two and one drops. Pretty solid. Sometimes you even need three and four drops. Other things to mention. Well, not a whole lot. So next up, some middling wild cards. I think I'm going to take Reprocessor. It's less committal than uh, Dual Shard. And more of a unique effect. Though, it was quite close. Both at Reaver, Rage 2. At start your turn, destroy each troop with the lowest attack power. Blood doesn't typically have high attack power. This card, kind of a um, I want to win all by myself type card. Um, probably worth considering. Uh, it is a good finisher in a control shell. And so it's counter to a lot of the blood strategies like spiders or you know defensive troops. Um, though I haven't got a chance to play with it. I know Shadow Blood Assassin's a really solid, consistent card, but I'm willing to try new things. So that's only been out for a week and a half. So we'll see if this makes the deck. It's only worth 30 cents, so it's not we're not taking it for the value. <clears throat> Continue to get good blood stuff. Vampire Kiss, very strong. Uh, Pain Breeder, pretty good. If we do go Spiders, this card's going to sit in our deck awkwardly. Um, but it's looking like it's kind of broken. Also, Wild is pretty open. This card's great in Sapphire, anything. This card's great in Wild. So we're getting really good Wild cards. Uh, wild Sapphire is a decent archetype. Kind of tempted to go Vampire Kiss because it's removal. Card's kind of a blowout and wild. Hmm. I'm seeing good wild and seeing good um, blood signals. So I'm gonna take the vampire kiss and see what happens. All right. So that card is okay. You might not be able to cast what it is you take, but it's a form of it's not really card advantage, more hand disruption. I think it's fine. This is a good finisher. Especially if you have an evasive blood troop of some type. A lot of these are good, especially if you go shift wild or shift uh, blood diamond. Pyronets are okay. And uh, red shell. This is a unique effect. Again, maybe this would be more of an experimental draft. Uh, most proactive card is probably be Pyro Knight. And uh, most unique effect would probably be Warlock. I might go Warlock here. Uh, I might go Warlock. I don't love this card. It's done very good against me, but I kind of got to set it up. Alright, well, the Blood Train's moving. Took like some wild cards being cut, so maybe not jumping into wild is the right move. Um, Sapphire pairs very well for him. Lightning Brave would be great. Uh, if we didn't have a Parapagey. Nothing to note about Reprocessor. If you do go Spiders, I'm feeling those Spiders. You know, they are 1 1 unblockable. Sometimes a 3 3. I can be blocked and get the job done. All the better. So Parapagey, I think premium removal of the set. Just the fact that it kills anything and helps along an archetype. It's just really amazing. Alright, so we can go Ovo and play Emperor's Laggy or have Sack Outlets that Menace again. Go Fiery Ignition. I would like to go Spiders. This card plays nice with Spiders. This doesn't. This card plays nice with Spiders. Lackey is great, and if you have the uh, 
the revert champion. But Rune Lab is just probably the marquee enabler for spiders. We're already kind of in Sapphire. The Green Blood, probably one of those spiders. Unless you have a lot of diamond. Then you want to go ship, maybe, or go to sock deck. So it's pretty late. So maybe that's an indicator that spiders is open. So this is pretty mad. Sack outlet. Yeah. I guess it's a decent finisher. Looking in spiders. No, that's a good spider trick. Spider trick. And a pretty weak pack. We have a lot of Hmm. I know this guy replaces itself if you cast an action that you can play soon. It's kind of like getting a free blocker, but it's not really that worth it. I know these go late. I'll have to even take it down. Oh, I'm a little confused. Sorry about the dog. Yeah, I like to have an option to do something with that guy later. Ooh, I was gonna. Huh. Yeah, I was gonna happily take Windborn to cycle, but. Um, I don't think I can shield the dog from barking. Uh, I need a better mic. Um, I'm just on a headset, so that's why you can hear everything that's happening, and I apologize. Um, anyway, I was going to take Windborn Disciple easily. That's kind of a signal, too, that Long Spring is open. But Hatchery Cultivator is marquee uncommon um, for eggs. If you don't believe me, play two women in deck and see what happens. It's pretty insane. Multiplying eggs. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, and a control shell. Getting some cards. Again, another kind of sack buff. This card here, when a spider in this play under your control, you may exhaust the troop. Mm -hmm. a little tempo advantage. Cool. Oh, my God. People really are undervaluing this card. A 3 3 lethal. In and of itself is amazing. Um, being able to block a ton of things and then be able to trade off with anything bigger. So amazing. And then the fact that you can shift it when needed. It's a great card. So all the shift. Um, <laughs> shifted back to me. Uh, nice guy Stargazer is great. It's just, just a signal. I'm just noting that Wild State kind of open. It's kind of clear where we're at. We're going. Now we're going kind of spiders. Wild would have been okay. Uh, Ruby kind of dried up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pretty good in a spider deck. Has that toughness that's kind of a key. And so I like the efficiency of this card more. And I, you tend to get as many of these as you want. So, no gem. Not quite worth a card, even in spiders, unless you're like pure mill, which isn't really an option. But I'll probably take it over a third or a second. Come on, it. Yeah, an okay finisher. And questionable whether or not we ever cast that up. Oh, better in a control shell, for sure. Nature's resolve, target troop you control, and all other troops that share a trait with that troop in all zones that can't be interrupted. Seems like a pretty awesome sideboard card. In constructed. Um, this card can get out of hand. It also eats removal. It's a bit of activation. People kind of freak out when they see that card. At least so far. Obviously, score is good. I'm not doing Ruby anything, I don't think. This card's kind of okay. It's actually. Found decent uses for it, even though it's first read it seems underwhelming. The fact that it's quick action and kind of cheap, it's pretty good. It's not too hard to keep up the resources, but I'll take a second. Fair of uh, Removal is getting pretty good. You don't necessarily need early game removal in blood, because a lot of your, especially when you're in spiders, because a lot of your troops are like two fours for three and stuff like that, so you kind of can build a good defensive base. Not saying what I want to see. I guess we can take another one of these. Uh, the fact that it's a two drop and a one four. Huh. We're pretty happy. That and Spider Mom are the great commons that build the defensive shell of spiders. We do need more enablers, to be certain. But, uh, Mosk? Bloodguard. Get a 
my deck. Right. So maybe I put somebody in spider somehow by accident. I don't know. I don't want to send a spider card in this pack. What do we do? This could be good on a spider. <laughs> maybe we even splash. I don't think we'll ever be able to do it. Right. Yeah, we can splash. Give something flight. And there's their toughness or whatever. Uh, I guess I'm going to flash. But the problem is, it's just nothing in this pack. So, I'm just going to take this guy. On a whim. Oh, uh, Ruby. You continue to be awesome. So, I like this guy even paired with Ruby. Um, definitely an aggressive mid range type card. Um, not what we're doing it right now. Are we poison eggs? Uh, we got enough signals. Pack one. I think someone's just in spiders on our left. Which is less detrimental. Because in theory, it should be open on our right. Pack three. Yeah, just in theory. But evasive troops, but a quick and cheap. Quite strong. Number two. Nope. Wait. No, it's just number one. Wait. So we have the other, they have her too. So three and four evasion. Especially an aggro ticket. Not bad. Um, yeah, no. No spiders. And no. No decent blood or. No sapphire. I knew I could exhaust this guy reliably. I think if I was going to play the flight champion, that would be kind of good. But, yeah, we will play one of these. But I'm not seeing the other, like, five and six drop common egg enablers, like this guy. But it looks like things are, as, they, as we wrap around the table, we're getting more of the spider stuff. So, that lets me know that chances are we'll get a good pack three in spiders. I don't think I'm really passing a better deck either. You guys can, you guys can do what you have done that, but I haven't seen a whole lot except for maybe Wild Wombat in pack one, and Ruby, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, but you're fine. Okay, so we're all set up for our enablers because we're gonna pick another one of these guys, and we're just gonna exhaust this stuff down and attack whatever's on board. It's late game, so that's another way to finish the game. You know. You can win the rest of your troops, not just uh, your spiders. I mean, a couple of these. It's too expensive. But yeah, it's fine. Getting an early defensive start in spiders is pretty important. We're seeing a good sapphire. Now that we're at the other side of the table. Yep, lightning bird. Thank you. So now we're just more enablers. As it stands, we have one. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. <coughs> Sorry for the dog. <coughs> I don't know if I want to play this card quite yet, so I think what we're going to do is get some fixing just in case we see a bomb or something that happens. Like yeah, it's exceptional fixing, so that part's really good. I mean, it's nothing to get too excited about, but sometimes it's good to like prepare. It's a decent control card. Just being able to block twice. Not a bad idea. Also, it's good to have access to one of these in your sideboard. Chloe! Sorry, I finally had to say something. She's nuts. Um, no longer. Um, Yeah, probably more likely you bring this on the sideboard. I might play two of these. So we need enablers, because these will get get our opponent to draw eggs faster. It's kind of the point. Um, though, without enablers, it's kind of a weak point. We're not really, we're not good enough to 
build a mill strategy around. I don't think. We'll just hate the card, but probably the most frustrating one. So we're not really going to have Kaggadals. Well, I guess we already have a few Kaggadals, but I'm still not going to play it. But since we might play it, we'll take it. Same with Vampire. Vampa Pegasus. Probably not going to make the deck, though. Not really Sack. And then... Yeah. Alright. So at least... Well, I'm probably not going to play three of these. Alright, never mind. And the Lunacy. Alright, come on, good pack three. We need enablers. We need enablers. So, part of the Rathroid, going for some money. Probably going to pick that. But if we didn't pick that, we're not giving up a whole lot. This card, we'd probably pick, play three of these, and get rid of. Well, our prize would be pretty high at that point, so I don't know. This card's quite strong, but that ship is sailed. Um, Throwback, more of a tempo mid range aggro card. So, yeah, it's not a whole, we're not giving up a whole lot. So, picking a card that's probably selling for around 300 flat. It's not bad. And we're not to play against it. So, double whammy. A little worried about this deck, though. If we don't get the enablers, I don't know exactly what we're going to do. So, you know, we're playing two of these. It's exceptional, right? But we're not. I repeat, we don't have the enablers yet. It was a lot like, like uh, Robots was in set one and two, where it's like you build the shell, but you don't really get the, the key cards, and you're kind of left with the middle end deck. But we have stuff that attacks and blocks, so. Well, you know, maybe we'll get there anyway. The Hatchery Cultivator, exceptional card. Needs enablers. And by enablers, I mean things that put eggs in your opponent's deck. Let's do a little bit of cleanup. Memorable is fine. Oh, yeah. Exactly what we want. Fifth Book of Tarsus. No. No standard card. We love Egg Mom. She's great. Uh, Wild Thing Emirate. I just call her Egg Mom. Um, the Rune Webs. All day, right? That's what we want. I'll take five. Couple of the O2s. Would be quite nice. Any of the O2s that exhaust and put some eggs in your opponent's deck. Very good. Very solid. Very necessary. I don't know if we're gonna find a home for you, Lord Dirt Reaver. He basically says, at the end of your turn, kill all your spiders. I don't like it. Um enabler please. Hello? Quad shard, maybe? Okay. Um, technically an enabler, though conditional, and hard to keep up resources for. At your guard, your enabler, and your high defense. Get in my deck. Come on, enablers. Okay, this is going to be the slowest of the slow spider decks. That's okay. A, I haven't seen a single O2 common, so somebody else is trying the best to be in spiders, too. Alright, same reason we good last pick, same reason we good now. So our curve is really high, so really what's going to help us is all our removal and then our early cost high defense troops. Those are going to help keep us alive. So we don't just die um, on the first five turns. Windborn. I'm not too stoked about our enablers. I really want those O2s. Having two of these is fine, but the spiders is really hoping we could have three or four. And so, even though this looks like a decent deck that was passed to us, um, maybe like Mono Wild. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not Ramp is kind of open. 
There's still more stuff to come. Can you play this? It's a powerful effect, and it's an enabler. I'm going to be pretty defense deed up on high defense forward states. Pretty quick, so maybe we can do that for. I got plenty of these. Um, I don't know if I'm going to play one of you, but I like what you try to do. Not really the deck for the cap. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I would like to squash you. Nope. No, 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 no. Shadow Blade is awesome. Thank you very much. Just controlling the game, right? Controlling the game. Death touch all around. High defense. What happens when they have a flyer? You kill it. Probably pair they do your vampire's kiss. Or we die to it. Or we outrace it with spiders. So we're not going to get a very quick load of spiders. We don't have a lot of quick enablers. We have a couple. But most of them are quite slow. This card is interesting. Kind of like win more once you already have the spiders. We also have some evasive troops. Maybe we'll play them. Kind of in the drugs here. Again, if I can exhaust this guy, it will be pretty good. Let me see. You can play two of them in the deck. I think it's kind of silly. You're not probably going to make the deck. I mean, I can hate draft you. Not really that impactful against us, but it's not bad either. What? Maybe there's a sideboard game where I just need to like go all in on one thing and try to win as fast as possible. I doubt it, but eh, maybe we'll hate draft you. Okay. Well, maybe Mecha Pro Cape is needed. Merciless. Also, we need a two, but I don't have all the sack outlets. And these little spider guys, we're definitely not going to want to be incentivized to sacrifice them. Like, we need them to live. And the card that I almost picked a while back ago. Probably not going to make the deck. No. Who knows? I think we have plenty of playables. I mean, essentially, because we're architect drafting, we definitely need everything that can go in that archetype. That's a good card. 4-3 for 4. Kind of a staple of Wild Ramp. So not quite enough enablers to my taste. Well, maybe get an idea of what Spiders is trying to do. Basically, lock up the board, get your enablers out, um, and just try to control the game, game until you can take over your Spiders. If you can't do it on the ground, you gotta do it with removal in the air, but removal is pretty, pretty plentiful in blood. Even some removal cards in Sapphire, and Sapphire has access to a lot of evasion, so... Pretty all-around good strategy. You do need a critical mass of enablers and synergistic spy cares about spiders cards. I didn't get the best. I got two of the well, I got two of the best um, cares about spiders cards, but I didn't get the best enablers. I got two of the best enablers, but I didn't get the second best, which normally is in abundance. Uh, the O2 I'm talking about. So there's gonna be another spider deck out there. And then maybe somebody who like tried to go for it but someone's getting cut and cut out. Anyway. One, two, three. These guys go in the deck because they won force for two. Not really because they exhaust, though that will help later on the game. They're early drafts that are good late. Pretty much all game, so very key concept. Any troops that are good at multiple stages of the game and spiders, because you need to live, basically. And you need some kind of win column when the spiders aren't headed. Three processor again gonna be all right. He's gonna get some spiders out. Let's uh, just because we're doing a video, let's unlock his extended art. Sounds fun. Good. There's his 
because the witches grew lava and bones. They kind of a sadistic brewer of life. Um, cool. Pretty. Uh, these guys, obviously, this is what I meant by the marquee on common. Two forward, doubles the amount of eggs uh, that trigger, or that go into the deck once you trigger. Or it's pretty sinister. Awesome card. In fact, I want to unlock one of these too. Oh, he's a spider. <laughs> I guess I should have guessed, but it's not clear that he's a spider until you unlock the extended art. That's kind of cool. Anyway, we're playing both of those. And we're playing both of these, because this is just the value troop. You can stop or anything. Just 2 2 5 or 3 is exceptionally good. And then you have a shift light into something else bigger later. Amazing. Rune Red Infiltrator. You guys don't know about this card. It's the marquee enabler. So it comes out in 2. And. It's pretty hard for your opponent to answer a flyer on turn three without removal. And if the thing does take a whole removal card, you're not too sad because you only invested two, and typically they had to invest three, four, five. I have to kill it. Um, so when it hits, two spiderling eggs. That's it. That's all you need. This card, life gain, eh, not as important as it normally is. Because they have such. Defensive stuff. Um, secondary win con. I don't know if he makes a deck mainly because we need more defense early the game. But we'll see. I'm gonna play two of these guys. Three three lethal. Good enough on its own. I pay four for that. In fact, you have an option to shift it. Exceptional. Two of these guys again. It's cost. The fact that it's evasive because it's uh, base power and toughness to cost ratio is just really really solid. And a quick troop. Sometimes it can snipe something or ambush as it is. Um, I don't know about you. He may be good because we have a lot of evasion. And we're playing spiders. I'm going to have to put a maybe on that card. So many playables we end up with. Two pair of phases all day. I play four. No problem. One of you. Kind of a bad, bad enabler. Two of you. You're a great enabler, but you're a slow enabler. It's a necessary evil. Got a little bit of money. I don't think you're going to make the deck. I can't kill all my spiders. Of course, this card also reads... I don't know. It might not kill your spiders either. It might not have spiders out. It's so anti my deck. For that reason, I can't play them. I just can't. Everything. All my stuff basically has the lowest toughness. The thing that my whole deck is building on producing, it's guaranteed to have the lowest attack. I mean, the toughness to ratio is way unbalanced in the toughness ratio. Because, you know, spiders need to live. To produce the RNG effect. So yeah, I can't play them. What do we have? 20 cards? Really, I'd rather keep my sixes. Have something to do with spiders. So that is a good catch on there. Um, so our curve is high. I guess we can play one of these. Put a lot of pressure on our early game to stay alive. So, let's see. That's one fours. This guy may be able to upgrade some stuff. Some spiders if we really need to come back on D. Got some early removal. You can kind of race in some situations. This guy is two four. We have five things that we can play before turn three that lock up the board pretty good. We got Death Touch. Alright. So I'm not as worried about playing high resource. Though, we may want to play 18 lands. This one, two, or shards. One, two, three, four, five things over five. We might even play two of these. Alright, we'll try you out. Because we do have enough evasion to where I think getting that extra little 
no power getting to those eggs could be good. It could also be a dead card, so I don't like it. For each damage done that way, though, that's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. It may be a powerful enough effect. If it was just spiders, I think it's a little too RNG, but the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six evasive troops plus spiders, and two two guys that tap things down. Of course it's on their turn, but they can't untap it, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah, tap things down. So you know what? It's not bad. We're going to play 18 now. Because we have double blood and it's our secondary color. Well, two paraphages. I can see justification for... Because we do have a decent curve early game. Enough to do early game for playing 17. I'm going to go on the cautious side and play 18. I just like to play 18 on all my control decks. Um, just as a default. That way we can go 10 and 8. Because as you'll see, I think, there's a lot of demand on Ruby early. Well, it's not as bad as I first thought. Yeah, we can maybe go 17. Because that's three, four, five, six, seven, two drops, and I'm playing 18 shards. Why am I playing 18 shards? Because I have two six drops, a one, and a five. No, nope. no, 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 I take that back. Two six drops, and one, two, three, four, five drops. That is why. All right, so this deck is prone to flood, but it's not like we're aggro. We can, we don't have to have perfect turns, because that. Our goal is to kind of control and stabilize, like, by turn two, you know? Spiders is also very good against aggro, and most popular decks tend to be aggressive. We might lose in the air to, like, the dedicated, uh, yeah, like the Madame Anna deck, or... Just any kind of eh, not so much shift. But yeah, there's a lot of dining cards that just you know, like the Spirit Eagle, something dies, you get a long flyer, that double triggers, you can pull any card out of your graveyard. Well it's more of an elbow trick, but you know what I mean. The token flyer deck. It's pretty good. It's the enemy of eggs. Does what eggs does, but quicker. Uh, but it's also a lot harder to set up. And there's a lot of supported cards, so. And it's all, it's way more all in. Yeah, there's only one champion that will go in spiders. And that's probably something I can't pronounce. Zorzim of Koru. So there's a deep connection there to some lore. I know not what it is. Don't have any spider sleeves. I need spider sleeves. I don't have anything to do it. Wait. Yeah, you're kind of spidery. Yeah, you're spider ish. Maybe you were once a spider before you died. Or that rock caster himself. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. I think you guys get what spiders does. You probably already do by now. This isn't the most ideal spider deck, but that's pretty good. I did record probably the best spider deck I've ever seen. And has some audio complications. So this is a plan B. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for rounds one, two, and three.